to you, you know, what's happened to you this project? Um, I mean, apart from the world that was depicted on the documentary and a bunch of videos I watched on YouTube back in like 2013, um, I was really impressed by the world and the energy of it and the sense of freedom that, uh, that all these writers gave when, when they were on the bikes and after knowing that it was illegal to ride bikes and then I mean, there was like a no chase policy and understanding that their only sense of freedom was really when they were riding bikes. It, it really compelled me. Um, and also, just his journey as, uh, you know, in, in the marginalized community in Baltimore. Coming from Puerto Rico, I could connect very well with it. Uh, Puerto Rico is pretty much in Baltimore, like I said earlier. And um, I felt like I could tell my story through the eyes of the character of Mouse. So I really, I almost felt no difference except for the setting pretty much when it came to my story. So uh, I found the opportunity to be able to tell like a Puerto Rican story, uh, but through the eyes of Baltimore. And um, being there and, and seeing how the people are and how wonderful the people of Baltimore are, uh, I really wanted to do justice in the authenticity aspect of it all. Uh, I think that comes across. The, uh, what was it like working with the actors? What's your process with them? Um, well, we spend uh, quite some time with them, uh, even in the casting moments. Um, finding them wasn't that hard. Uh, we did like a nationwide search, trying to find the character of Mouse. And, uh, and from there, we were able to uh, find the other kids. And when we did the mass casting call, uh, the callback, uh, during that chemistry test, um, it was right there where we realized that those kids uh, almost knew each other for a while. Like, that, they, they never met before, uh, but their chemistry felt like they'd be best friends forever. So um, I really uh, motivated them to stay in touch, to get together, to play, uh, play PlayStation, and just get a sense of their own individual dynamics uh, so that they can play out uh, very authentically in terms of their relationship. Um, also, they, they're pretty much being themselves in a way. Uh, they acted, up, of course, and they're very talented. But being able to foster that relationship towards the very end was key to the relationship. Uh, and, you know, when it comes to, like, Tiana and Will Kepler, uh they're professionals. Like, they really made it really easy for me to work to work on set. And they were also very helpful in guiding the kids and the other non-actors uh, to give their best in that back and forth banter between their relationships as well. Uh, and when it came to like the other writers, like you know, Mick Mill, uh, who's a writer himself, uh, Ch uh, Jamal and Quinn, who, you know, they go by Chino and Willie Quinn, they're real writers in real life. Uh, that was part of something that we really wanted to foster is to bring the community into the project and have like real writers tell their story. So for the sake of authenticity, uh, they were able to give, to be themselves as well and perform their own stunts. Like the whole chasing, they did it themselves. Uh, they, you know, because of, uh, when it came to uh, insurance, they were like, you know, <laughs> actors, the stunts. And, but when, when we told Chia, for example, like, hey, we might need to get a stunt to do this, he's like, fuck no. <laughs> I'm going to do my own stunts. I'm not going to have anybody do stunts for me. And the same thing went for Vic and for Quinn. And, uh, and yeah, it was really, really enjoyable just to see them in their element and feel very comfortable telling their story. Well, I'm going to give a shout out right now to Scott Dugan. If you can stand up. He's the production designer. Uh, you know, he can, <laughs> Start putting the stuff around. Um, for, we, we were like a tripod when it came to like Scott, Kate, Irish Mandy, the MVP, and myself. Uh, we were embedded there for like uh, seven weeks prior to shooting, and we really made a point for ourselves to spend as much time as we can with them in their streets, in their neighborhood. Uh, we went to every Sunday ride that we were invited to. And they gave us like full access. Like we, they were very welcome us within the community because they knew 
that they, like for the first time, they felt like they, the Baltimore and their culture could be seen aside from the wire, which uh, as amazing as it is, uh, they want to, you know, like, oh, Baltimore, the wire. No, they, they want to be known for something else. And I think uh, that was something that we were catering to. And for, for that matter, we definitely spent a lot of time there. Uh, they walk us through the streets where they perform all the sons, and we were we went around trying to find those places where it could be easy for us to replicate those moments. And, uh, and you know, at first you get like a huge set in the middle of West Baltimore in the inner city. People are not used to that. Somebody will be complaining like, "Ah, oh, they're not like from on or you know, give me two hundred bucks, you want to shoot here or something like that." But we started making them part of it, so they started being like more, uh, they, they were like our own bodyguards and PAs on set. They'd be like, oh, I'll get the fuck out of here, they're shooting a movie, they're shooting a movie. So like, it, it, it was a very welcoming thing, and Baltimore with all like, its issues with infrastructure, I felt like it was uh, a decent thing to do. Uh, I, I didn't feel like uh, there was this, energy or aggression, I guess, what we're doing, so it definitely make it very easy. How much was the director of the documentary, 12 o'clock boys involved? Uh, not at all. Um, the, the film is definitely inspired in his documentary, and the documentary uh, shares a, a, a universe that we were not exposed to, uh, but it didn't have the real story when it came to what we wanted to show. And um, the, the documentary, it was very real and very honest, and we wanted to make a movie where at the end we can flip the script a little bit and show possibilities uh, to these kids. Like seeing something like in the documentary, it could be new to us, like we're not from there, but that's their everyday life. And part of the task that Sherman Payne, the writer, and Barry Jenkins were working on the initial draft uh, years ago, was what can we do to show the world to to live in the struggle but not beat people over the head with what they already know is themselves, right? So we wanted to show the potential of what a possible world could be if you know disenfranchised boys and girls uh, had mentors and were actually fostered to pursue their dreams and uh, showing a possible world. Uh, I think is the inspiration we want to give kids nowadays. Like for me, apart from you know movie lovers and and and, and directors and people that are into the craft, we wanted the audience also, especially people from Baltimore and disenfranchised communities, to see a movie that lifts them up. That yeah, they're they're they're, they're um, a product of their environment, but that doesn't determine who they can be if we change the possibilities. Uh, can you speak to uh, achieving the Baltimore accents in the film? Yeah, one of the things I feel after, uh, at least with the kids, for example, we love Baltimore, but um, apart from building a relationship where we can feel like they're real friends forever, uh, the other task that they were actually uh, working on for a while was with the guy with the coach. Uh, they went back with the lines with a dad with coach, and every time we were doing rehearsals or tape review, uh, a dad with coach was there with them, making sure they land all the nuances of the Baltimore accent. Because uh, it is a beautiful accent, it's so unique. Like, you will be anywhere, and you hear like, uh, or school, uh, uh, Baltimore, and, 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 you know, I'm not used to the different accents, but being in there for a while, I could understand right away, like, oh, that's Baltimore. So they, the kids knew they needed to do good to the city in that regard. They didn't want to sound like from anywhere else. So they put a lot of effort. And they even corrected themselves when we were shooting. If they said, oh, or something like that, that like, gives sound Baltimore, they would be like, oh, this is again, this is again. So they really wanted to cater for, uh, for the sake of us and please me. Uh, the question was about uh, how the trajectory is about Marion and why you said the first scene with the animals would be the one that was done. Yeah, yeah, one of the things from the documentary that we took a little bit from was the fact that the pug in the documentary, he, he used to love animals, like that was his passion. And um, 
uh, I hope it's still this. Uh, anyway, the case like we took that and we get some urgency to the gate that yeah, he, of course he's run to the streets and bikes his brother, he wants to live up to him, all the glam of being part of the top of our boys, so in this case the big night click. It's something that every kid wants to belong, right? He wants respect, he wants to be something. But he also had dreams. Like, he loves dying. I always said, like, he, he given the opportunity for these kids to pursue their dreams and the right people that will actually champion them to pursue their dreams. Uh, I don't see why anybody couldn't be what they really desire to be at the end. Uh, but, you know, and that's one of the things that I can relate to because back home in Puerto Rico you don't have a lot of options. And a lot of these options are pretty much given to a certain part of the community. And we wanted to allow a kid like Miles to feel and all the kids, all the mouse is out there to feel like you can do whatever you want to do. And when it came to the giving birth, he spoke to the fact that he at least the way we were seeing it that he's been working in this bed for a while and he can actually assist in something like this and he loves doing this this is the one that like you see him delivering the baby and the excitement and everything the same way that he looks at life and you can have both things you don't have to do one or the other and that goes to the fact that you know if we if we, if we provide them the avenues to pursue it they will pursue it um, can you talk about your intention specifically with casting? Who, who was it? Meek Mill. With Meek Mill. Yeah, so, uh, to your point, yeah, Meek Mill has had a, uh, 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 been in jail precisely. He was in parole, he was popping willies, and this program here of him popping willies, they went after him and they put him in prison. And we all know that's bullshit. So, even before the movie started, uh, even before I was going into the project, uh, Big Bill was kind of like interested in like uh, navigating the, the acting career and seeing possibilities around that. And him being one of the rappers that sings about uh, probabilities and black life, um, for the producer it was like a no brainer. Uh, then, you know, when I came to the project, he, he was in prison, so we have to like, okay, we need to find somebody else. So we had a really good uh, actor. Uh, that I hope I work with him soon uh, for that role. And while well, we were in the process of almost like an introduction, Nick Mill was released from prison. And um, the producers were really like, ah, oh, man, we have to, like, we have to go back to him. So I'm like, sorry to the other guy, we're going to go with you. And the character of Blacks that we were instructing during that rewriting process uh, ended up being almost irreparable to two weeks back. So having him play that character uh, was kind of like a little weird lucky that he went through all that process because you see a lot of things stepped out, he put up an album, and then for Grammy, and now he's like the voice of prison form, and he's doing something about it, he's trying to be back to the community. And uh, he's pretty much black, black in that, in that regard. So him playing that character came naturally, and you know, I can trust with the producers, it wasn't an easy decision to make, uh, but at the turnout, it just came out as authentic as it could be. Like, some stuff, you know, as a director, you'd be like, oh, give me a little bit more of this, and you're like, I oh, wouldn't do that shit, right? <laughs> then, let's keep it that way. You know? <laughs> but it was good to have people that went through that, and he kept, he kept us in check. And, you know, I couldn't be happier with the outcome. Excellent. Let's please thank our filmmaker. Hey, this is Eric from MyOnCinema.com. If you want to support us, subscribe below. For more reviews, interviews, film festival coverage from Sundance, Cannes, Toronto, you want to check out these guys on this side.